Yes, sir. We out of the locker room. Me and Pat P made some adjustments. Man, we told Coach, man, like, man, rusher, listen, man. To, yeah, we, we need a pass <laughs> rusher, man. The quarterback got too much time. He going through his third progression, his fourth progression. Man, we got to get somebody who can put some pressure on the quarterback. So Coach went in, said, you know what? Greg, you in. <laughs> Greg Russo is not in the game, man. Join us here, all things covered. Draft prospect out of the University of Miami. Man, I don't like saying that. The University of Miami, that doesn't sound good coming out of my mouth. You. No. No, no, Pat, we don't say that here. We don't, we don't call, no, we're not saying that. The Miami, the University of Miami. That's the only thing I can say, all right? 2019 All-ACC performer, considered one of the best pass rushers in this upcoming draft. We'll hear his name called extremely fast. You can follow him on Twitter and Instagram, the same name, at Greg underscore R5. Greg Russo, man, thank you for joining us. How you feeling? Feeling great, man. You know, I'm blessed to be in the position that I'm in. Now I just got to keep on getting better and take it a day at a time. Talking about the position you're currently in, man, fill the listeners and the viewers in on your draft process because you decided to opt out, didn't play one down this past season. So your draft process is safe to say started maybe in August or September. So fill us all in on your draft process and what your day-to-day routine was like and what it's like currently. Yeah. Well, of course, I opted out. You know, I started training real early. Of course, I would do all, like, the 40 stuff. But honestly, while while it was, like, the fall and winter, at that time, I was mainly just focused on, like, just becoming a better player. So working a lot of hands, getting my hands quicker, upping my football IQ, uh, always working on my pad level when I'm doing drills because I'm a taller guy, so I have a tendency to get up high. And obviously, to, if you want to be good at football, you got to stay down low. So definitely been emphasizing that a lot. Just getting better. Uh, and a part of my and one part of my game every single day, whether it's mental, physical, spiritual, pretty much anything, is growing as a person and as a player. And you worked out with Chuck Smith, right? Uh, and we know he's one considered one of the best technicians when it comes to pass rushers. How was yeah. that experience for you? It was great, man. Just to pick his brain, and gather some knowledge from him. You know, it's always an opportunity talking to somebody who's been in the league or even played in college, somebody who's played football and, and been in my shoes. So it was great to learn from him. He also taught me a uh, the cross chop technique. So it was, it was awesome working with him. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. I bet. yeah. And so what led you to opting out? You know, obviously a lot of college players opt out over this uh, weird pandemic year. So uh, what was the reasoning behind you opting out this season? A big part of it was my, my mom who was a COVID nurse at the time. Uh, she was going through a lot. So being able to opt out and, and help her out a little bit, definitely played a huge role in that. But also just the uncertainty. There wasn't really a plan set in place at the time. There was a lot of uncertainty, like uh, just revolving around the season, especially the college football season. There was conferences like can- canceling their own season and all that stuff. So there was just a lot going on at the time. And basically you just wanted to focus on yourself and get yourself prepared yeah. for the exactly. big school. Yeah, yep. but at the same time, I was super excited because – Playing in the league's been a dream of mine since I was a little kid. So to, t- to take that next, like that next step towards that was it was awesome. And hey, the crazy thing about it too, though, G, if you think about it, this is your that was your first time making an executive decision. You mm-hmm. know, what I mean? it was. when you come into the league, it's all you know. You got to you're gonna be on your own now, so you have to make a lot of executive decisions. So you made a, a early executive decision by uh, not uh, not attending. Uh, the University of Miami uh, the last past season. But I also saw that you had LSU on your offer list. What led you to stay home in Miami? I mean, I, I thought about it for sure. Like, LSU is my brother's dream school. So when I got that offer, he was like, bro, you like, you got to go. <laughs> you got to go. But, like, <laughs> Miami was coming at me too hard, man. Like, Miami sat me down. They had a plan for me. Like, they taught me the defense and, and all that. So, like, I guess because, like, the proximity to home, it's easier for them to reach me. I was at Miami way more than I could get to LSU or anything like that. So, like, the relationship we built between me and Miami, is just it, it just happened a lot quicker and it's faster than it happened for any other school. I got you. Yeah. In high school, you played all over the football field. Yeah. But, you know, they said you were real good at the wide receiver position. Yep. Uh, what led to you deciding to give up being a wide receiver to put your hand in the dirt because you were, you were balling as a wide receiver. So it wasn't yeah. like you were struggling, but what led to that decision? I'd say I realized like a trend in the offers I got, like I got like NC state, Iowa state, West Virginia, which are big schools, but I got all of those for like receiver slash safety, but like the bigger offers like Georgia and Miami LSU, I got those for outside linebacker edge rusher. So I thought to myself like, man, 
I must project a lot better at edge rusher slash DN slash outside linebacker. So I was thinking like that's probably the best position for me moving on, going to going into the future. And it, it worked out. How difficult was that transition for you? Because most wide receivers, as as we all know, being defenders on this yeah. uh, 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 on this interview, most wide receivers don't like to be hit. So if you don't like to be hit, you don't like hitting people. So how was that transition from catching passes, scoring touchdowns, to now I'm trying to hit people and sack quarterbacks? How difficult was that? I feel like for me, since I've been playing football since I was like a young and like seven years old in pads, I was mm -hmm. always on defense at first. But like, as I got older, I wanted to score touchdowns and stuff. So then I transitioned <laughs> to wide receiver, you feel me? Cause yeah. you, you know how it is to be scoring touchdowns in high school, all that, all that cool stuff. But like, I knew like in, at heart, I was a defensive player and like, my mentality on the field, I was all, I was always a physical player, even at receiver. You know, I wouldn't let nobody jam me or none of that type of stuff. So, like, that was just the way I came. I looked at the game. I was never, like, a pretty well receiver is, is what I'm trying to say. I was never that type of receiver. So, like, I mean, it was really a smooth transition for me. I mean, I'd use the same releases sometimes that I used on the line at receiver. Just to oh, kind of okay. The really? A little bit. Yeah. Got to okay. get yeah. out sometimes. Yeah, yeah I, it, I, it makes I, sense. I, <laughs> <laughs> makes sense. You got that that chop or that right. arm, whatever, whatever uh -huh. they be doing. Yeah, you got to dip line. that shoulder, baby. Yeah, you got to <laughs> dip that shoulder. It, it, it makes a yeah. lot of sense. That hey, that was a I you know Pat P. That had to been his first big time executive decision to to leave the wide receiver position, go play DN. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I like. Hey, that might be it. That, <laughs> that might definitely be it. might be it. <laughs> hey, G. Uh, me and you have something not necessarily in common, but I was a, a former teammate of a guy who attended the University of Miami and Calais Campbell, who was an awesome teammate. Mm -hmm. I giant, played with uh, Calais as well. Yeah, which was a giant. But we uh we saw over the last uh, a few months ago that he showed you some love. Uh, is there any tricks in trade, you know, with you guys having similar body types um, that Calais have uh, shared with you? I mean, he always tells me always just to keep my pads down because, like I said, we're taller guys, so we have the tendencies to get up, high, the tendency to get up high. So he's always telling me like pad level, pad level, and I'd be texting him. He'd be giving me tips like just how the league is, and you know, just to get my mind right and stuff like that. So he's kind of like a mentor to me, and kind of like just like that. He's like a big brother to me in terms of advice and all that type of stuff. So he's definitely somebody who'd be looking out. Hey, G, real quick, what young guys don't do. And I can contest this because I've seen a lot of young guys grow through this. You know, yeah. obviously, Calais has been there. He's done a lot of great things in this league. And you've been clinching on to him now. Don't let go. You know what I mean? Because Calais has been an all-pro guy. He's, you know, he's been on all-decade player. So he know how to get there. What young some young guys lose is, you know, oh, I want to be in this position, but not really – paying attention to the fact that this guy is trying to help me get to that position. Yeah. So don't lose focus on that. Calais is a good man. You know, like I said, I was a teammate of his for five years, always mean well, and he definitely want to see you achieve all the goals that you set out for yourself. So like I said, my advice to you, what stay I in his hip pocket. most young guys stay in his hip pocket. No you know, question. don't, don't, don't let your pride, you know, take over, you know, you know, over, you know, whatever it may be, just literally just just learn. Because that's what this game is all about. You mm -hmm. want to learn from the guy who's done it before you and also create it into your own. So Question. don't lose focus with that, G, man. Like like I said, okay. Khalil's a good guy, one of my favorite teammates that I ever had in the past. And he knows what he's talking about. Like I said, you yeah. guys have the same body type, same body structure. So you can you can definitely uh, learn a lot from him because there's not many DNs at 6'7". Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? <laughs> so – you could definitely learn uh get a, a couple of trick and trades from my man, the sleeping giant. For no sure. Appreciate even, that. Even when you start balling, man, yeah. keep reaching out to some of the savvy vets that are around you or some of the peers that are balling. You know, yeah. the, the 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 smartest people and the best people are the people that are always willing to learn from others. Yeah. And they don't think they know it all. You know what I mean? Yeah. So even yeah. the great ones can learn something new. Yeah. 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 Right. Man, be, being from Broward an area that has so much so much talent pro-like talent man t t t take us through that experience because you went to high school in Hialeah but what people don't realize you're from Broward you know what I mean and and, and we had Asante Samuel Jr. on with us last week and he said you know coming from Broward it's a little different swag a little different man talk about your upbringing before you went to high school in Hialeah Miami and just being you know in that Pompano area uh, yeah. that Pat P is from and talk about the talent that was around you I mean, it's crazy, you know, like, like go, going to the NFL, 
like as a little kid, I'm like, man, that's like one in a million, this and that. But like growing up in Broward, you see it happen to <laughs> this dude and that dude, and then it, it is it comes to you like, man, it's not impossible. You feel me? Like obviously mm-hmm. I, I'm blessed with certain traits like height and length and all that stuff, but definitely just having that mindset, seeing it happen around you. Like, for example, uh, I went to Monarch High School at first, and then when I was a freshman. Calvin really was a senior on the, uh, on our team. And then wow. when I was a freshman, Jerry Judy was a sophomore on our team. So I grew up with him. I played ball right. I played seven on seven with him. So just being around that, it really like, it'll bring your confidence to the next level. It'll bring your competitiveness to the next level. It'll, it just makes you want it even more seeing those guys go first round. So I'm trying to be in the same, in the same boat as those guys and be like, I'm just trying to be a legend, you know, trying to be one of the best to do it coming out of my hometown and hopefully like influence and, um, and uh, really just give other kids motivation growing up and seeing me do it. And, and then maybe they could be like, yeah, Greg did it. So I could do it too. So that's really just my goal. Coming hey, from Pat, a- you know, you know, what will be real cool. We got to get Eric, Eric on, on, on his research, man, get his team together. We need to figure out after this year's draft, how many Broward County natives, you know what I mean? High, that play high school ball in Broward or from Broward have gotten drafted first round. Hey, um, and we, I, I, we up there. Yeah. If you want to go back to the two thousands, I don't know how we would. What would be the cap off point? Listen, but... I, I I won't be afraid to say we're number one. To be honest, as, I, as hey, a, but, but y'all but y'all know how it is. You know how the boys from Dade always they feel like they got the best everything down there. So you know Dade would definitely have something to say with that. <laughs> say about that, but I'm just I'm I'm thinking at the top of my head. You know what I mean? Over the last, if you want to do over the last twenty years, clearly over the last ten years, I think Broward has been on point. Easy. Yeah, I agree. I, I agree. I but, mean, you can go yeah. through the list of teams, and there's a lot of guys that we don't realize actually from Broward. You know, yeah. they had that same recognition as well. That's the thing. That's and you know who I found out I was from Broward, man? I did not know he was. Well, they say he was raised in Broward, but he went to Georgia. Tyree Hill. Tyree Hill. Yeah. I did mm-hmm. not know that. From Lauderdale, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So he was. He was. He was raised in Fort Lauderdale up until he was seven years old. I was. I'm. I'm guessing, but then he moved to Georgia. And that's mm-hmm. where he lived uh, the remainder of his life. I did not yeah. know he was a, a broad combinator. Tyreek got a little bit of both, best of both worlds, Florida football and Georgia football. No doubt about it. Yes, sir. Yes, <laughs> hey, sir. G, with us having the mindset that we have being from Broward, how do you evaluate your um, your pro day? Because to me, I thought you had pretty good numbers. Obviously, 6'6", uh, 266, you ran a 4'6", 8 in the 40, uh, 30-inch bird, 21 uh, bench press. Uh, nine, uh, nine feet, seven you inches. Some numbers. Bar jump, eleven inches on your in, in your uh, hands. Eighty-three wingspan. How do you evaluate your pro day? Uh, seeing all those numbers and uh, after your performance. Yeah, I feel like like it was a. It's like I said, it's a blessing to be out there to compete one last time in my school, and also they welcomed me in a great way. Like for someone who opted out, you know, they they still got mm-hmm. a lot more for me and vice versa. That's good. It was it was great to be back there for sure. I feel like I compete. I feel like I had a solid day. I could I feel like I could have done a couple of things better, but it is what it is. And at the end of the day, you know, my goal, it was never like to uh, be the best pro day player ever. It's to be like, it's to be a pro, you know, and to, to have the best career I could possibly have. So after that, I really just put it behind me in a way. And I'm just super excited to just take that next jump. I've been working on a lot more like football stuff now as well. I, I stopped all the 40 training, all the bench press stuff. I'm yeah. still working out, of course, but I'm just excited to start to be able to only like just work on football and conditioning and just get ready for training camp or whatever uh, they throw at us this, uh, this season. So no, have, bro- team, have teams any, have asked you, uh, you know, anything about the lack of film in the last season? Obviously they seen you play, you, have, you had 15 and a half sacks in, in, uh, in 2019, yeah. but obviously not playing a full season. Have any team have any had any concerns about that? Yeah, some teams will ask me like, why should we draft you, uh, like only with only one year of experience? But what I'll tell them is that like at the end of the day, you can talk to people at my school. I'm a dog. I'm a competitor. You know, I want to be great. I, I feel like I have a really solid work ethic. And whatever team picks me, I'm gonna prove them right. You know, I'm gonna make I'm gonna make them proud for sure. I'm a I'm gonna prove to the t- to my teammates that I'm there for a reason. You know, that I'm not just somebody who just who just had it handed to them, and that like me. Even though I may have like only played one year, one year of college, I feel like I, during that one year, I, if you watch my film, I grew game by game, got better. My production went up. You know, I, I learned the playbook uh, better, like just like just the little nuances of it. You know, I feel like I was just becoming a smarter player every single game. So I also tell them, like, if you watch my film, turn my film on, you can see that I grew a lot during the year that I did play. Yeah. Right. I mean, you played one year and 
gave him 15 and a half sacks, and you didn't you didn't start until week six. I know, right? How is that possible? <laughs> Pat Peter Man didn't become a consistent know, starter until week six. The game, Mac. I already did the math, man. Yeah, that's 15 and a half. That, that's 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 what you should tell him. I only played <laughs> one year with my hand in the dirt and dropped 15 and a half. So what do you think will happen in year three, year four? Six games, Mac. He played basically. Six games. It's crazy. He started man. six games. He played in all. He played in all twelve, but he started six games. Hey yeah, man. Crazy, man. Hey, he got a high ceiling. What MJ said: the the ceiling is the roof. Remember when yeah. MJ said that? <laughs> the ceiling <laughs> is the roof for Greg. <laughs> the, the ceiling it's is true. the roof. I don't know what that means, but if MJ right. said it, it made sense. It makes sense. No doubt about it. <laughs> the ceiling is the roof for you, Mr. Russo. Hey, 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 talking about the draft, man. Give us a little insight here. You know, we got a lot of different NFL fans that are tuning in. With, watching us, listening to us. Give us an insight on some of the teams you really feel like you've gotten a real good vibe from. You know, teams that you have interviewed with via Zoom or teams that were at your pro day. Are there any you know uh, specific teams that you feel real good about? Uh, There's actually, there's a good amount I feel like. Just name some off, I'd say, I'd say the Titans, I'd say. They need, they need, boy, they need a draft. They need a, they need a rusher. Bad, okay, the Titans. Right. And they got a bunch of picks too. They got a bunch of fish, <laughs> but you know he only considered you know, he he think about for the first one. He not he he not think oh, about yeah, 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 no, yeah, he's yeah. gonna be the first one. I'm just saying they got a bunch yeah. of picks. <laughs> okay, we got the Titans. Who else you got? Um, Cowboys. They need a Giants. rusher. Uh, yeah. Who else? Uh, the Eagles. I, I talked to I talked all of them, but I get good vibes from the Eagles, uh, Falcons, um, Jaguars. So I feel like I feel like. There's a lot of landing spots and a lot of places I can end up at. So I'm I'm excited. I can't wait. I don't really know who they, people tell me that like the draft is crazy and it goes either way. Like you sometimes you get picked by a team that you didn't even think likes you. So I don't know where I'm gonna hey, go. That's crazy though. To go back to my draft story, I never had a conversation with the Arizona card. I never had a conversation with the, the Steelers either. I didn't talk yeah, to so the Steelers it, one time. It, it's literally gonna yeah. go totally opposite. Hey, good point. Hey, I forgot about that. Right now. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I was going to Atlanta. Atlanta, I had a, a phone call with the owner and the GM on Friday before the draft. Oh. I'm down there, AJ trying to get me some jewelry. Hey, I, I, hey I'm down there, AJ trying to get me some jewelry, trying to get my little piece and chain together. I'm on the phone. I'm like, man, wait, well, might get back in Atlanta? That might be all right. And I was right. like, wait a minute. Hey, I'm like, what? I'm looking at Pat, you was at my draft. You remember how hot I was? Boy, I was still oh, yeah. hot, boy. Boy, I was still <laughs> hot, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, I thought, man, listen, that's the thing. Don't expect the worst. Yeah. Just to kind of take away some stress <laughs> that might happen or some disappointment. Yeah. Expect the worst. When I had that phone call from Atlanta, expect the worst. On, hey, yeah, expect the worst. You know what I mean? Hope for the best. I literally thought I was probably going to Atlanta maybe in the late first. You know what I mean? And when that didn't happen, man, I said, man, I went to throw up all my fruit cup, man. All the little fruit I had off my dish. The man went and hide in this room, man. I didn't want to talk to nobody. <laughs> I don't want to talk to nobody. <laughs> Pat Peter boy want to aggravate me. Why you hot? Why you by yourself, man? Leave me alone, man. I feel you, bro. I feel you. <laughs> Leave me alone. Hey, speaking of the draft, you know, Greg, you actually planned on attending the draft in Cleveland, right? Yeah, I mean, that's what I was going to talk about. <laughs> un unfortunately for you, Greg, you were, you, were, you were a year too late because last year it was supposed to be in Vegas. Vegas, I know. Yeah, but you still want to go to Cleveland, believe hey, That's Steven, cool. I ain't gonna lie, man. You might be better off going to get you a spot at Found Blue, man. <laughs> For real? Pat, the the man want to go to the Pat, you went to the, the draft. Pat, did you not go to the draft? I did, but there's so many uncertainties. Like he talked about going into the college football season, man. Yeah, that's true. Man, look, Cleveland might rain. It might be cold. <laughs> Hell, Pat, don't know if anybody going to you, you up. You only <laughs> saying that because it's Cleveland now. So if it were another I hot am. city. <laughs> okay, you being biased to Cleveland. So All what right. I'm saying is, he can enjoy it better in Miami with his people. At the, at the, at the yeah, blue. they go to Mount Blue, man. G, get the, get the, get the penthouse, man. Get the penthouse. It's too late. He already it's told the league he's going, so he got to go. What led to that decision yeah, right. to go to the draft? Though, what led right. to that decision? Uh, <laughs> I really, really just talking to my family and stuff. Uh, talking to my agent, and they just they all said I should go, and they all wanted to go. But I wanted to go too for sure because I feel like walking across this. Walking across the stage and shaking the commissioner's hand. That's like iconic, of course. No so question. Like, yeah. Doing that, that'll be that'll be dope. I'm really looking forward and, and to it. And I'm just talking trash. Go enjoy that. Go enjoy that moment. Cause it, it really is. Cause I was in a in a situation to where we didn't know Will's gonna play football. So I was in the situation of Will's in the lockout in the midst of the draft. Yeah. So I was like, man, I'm just like you. I'm like, man, that's an iconic moment, you know. 
you know, walk across the stage, you always dreamed of that moment of your name getting called, you holding that jersey up, this, that, and other. So, no, I was just I was just pulling your leg. Go enjoy that moment. For sure. For sure. Yeah, great. <laughs> when they call your name in the first round, right? When they call your name in the first round, are you going to hug Roger Goodell or are you going to give him a handshake? What you feeling? Uh, yeah, I guess know. Hey, you don't know because I, I, I asked myself the same question, Mac. I I just went with the flow. <laughs> yeah, let's go with the flow. I'm going to just do what feels natural, bitch. <laughs> hey, I tell you I, what. I'm going to tell you right now, he's probably going to grab, he, he probably going to reach out for a hug first. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> for sure. For sure. sure. Boy, if they call your name super early, you better form tackle them. Well, <laughs> Creak my shoes all down. You get the your night. first fine. Get it out the way. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. AG, uh, obviously going into the next league, you know, we have a bunch of different schemes here. Do you consider yourself uh, an outside linebacker or a 4-3 edge rusher? Mm, good I question. Like, I feel like because of what I played at Miami, I feel like at first I'd be more comfortable playing – playing the 4-3 edge position, but I feel like I could definitely grow into an outside linebacker scheme because I also had some of the same looks at Miami as well. And pretty much anywhere along the D-line, because I played the zero, I played the three, I put on uh, pass rushing downs, I played five, nine, and I dropped the coverage a couple of times too. So I feel like I feel like I pretty much fit any team that's that's picking. So, G, my, my next question to you is, because I've you know i been in the league for a long time, going on, on my 11th season, Mac been in the league for a very long time. Nine years, right, Mac? Uh, seven. Seven years. Yeah. So we know, you know, some guys have, you know, preferences. If they want to have a hand in the dirt, they want to be on a, in a two-point stand. What is your, I guess, what is your go-to stance? What do you feel more comfortable in? In a in in three-point or a two-point? What do you feel your best get-off is? Three-point for sure. I feel like three-point, yeah. Okay. Uh, get-off is one of the things that I've been, I've been impressed with. You, you got to be the first man off the ball. Last yeah. man off, the last one to get to the ball. Yeah. And being the first one off the ball, that's something that you have really perfected in your collegiate career. When you look at, when you talk about, and I want to get a little technical right here, so put your coaching hat on for us, Greg. When you yeah. talk about rushing the passer, what is something that you believe is one of your go, not necessarily your go-to move, but one of your favorite moves you like to pull out is your trick bag. Is it a bull rush? Is it a speed rush? It's third and eight, G. It's third and eight, four, four. Yeah. Two minutes ago, you got to get to the quarterback. What's your best? Hey, move? hey, and we we in the secondary. Hey, Greg, first rounder, get man. Get, get, get some pressure, man. Stop playing around. <laughs> That's why we draft you. What you going to give us? What kind what of you move you going to give us? I'm going to give you I'm gonna give you a hezzy with like a side swipe, so a double hand swipe, and I'm going to rip under, and I'm going to get the sack. Okay. Oh. I like that. So you're going to give him a hesitation, a slight hesitation. A hesitation inside just to get him to stop his feet and maybe stop his his uh his kick set. And then I'm going to uh -huh. take him around the edge and but always make sure I finish with my rip. And I'm going to also keep working my hands because some people throw their, throw their uh, two-hand slot once, but a lot of times I know in the league, the tackle's going to be way better. So I'm going to definitely throw it a couple times. I'm going to be like like a windshield wiper for doing it. Like, <laughs> it across the edge. Got to. So, G, so I was like going back again. I played in, in this league a very long time. Yeah. So you have to be, especially nowadays, you have to be very versatile. You have to be able to play left. You have to be able to play right. So do you feel like you're very versatile as a player or you're just a slow, slow, uh, solely left or a right guy? Do you feel your best move come off your left? Do you feel your best move come off the right? Like, how, how do you feel? Uh, how you feel about that? I feel like I could play both for sure. And I could definitely get production out of both sides. But like, I feel like there's different nuances in my game where it's like there's some things I might do better on the right than I do on the left. Like, for example, if you're a corner, you might press better on your left with right. this hand first and then vice versa, like switched around. So I feel like I have kind of those, but I, I feel like a big part of that is knowing what you're strong at on both sides of the ball. Right. Okay. I like it. I like it. Last question before we transition to the superlative part of this show. Uh, you and Jalen Phillips could be the first set of defensive ends to go in the first round since 2006. Uh, Mario Williams and Manny Lawson out of the uh, North Carolina State. Yeah. Do you have any, and, and Jalen balled out this year, he actually wore your number uh, that you wore in 2019. Do you have any regret not being able to play on the same field with Jalen? Because if, man, I, I, man. I was I was happy, I was happy you opt out. Because when y'all got Jalen Phillips, and I'm like, boy, they got Greg on that D-line. Mm. Yeah. That might be tough, but <laughs> do you have any regret not actually being able to play with Jalen? I want to say it's like a regret, but I, a part of me definitely wishes wishes I did. I feel like that would have been sick. Oh, that would have been a lot of fun for sure. Man, no, it wouldn't have been fun for quarterbacks. 
I wouldn't. Exactly. I wouldn't. Exactly. I wouldn't. <laughs> no, I definitely wouldn't. But I mean, yeah, I, I wish I, I kind of wish I did play with him. But also, I'm super happy to see the success that he had. And yeah. hopefully, God willing, we both go first round. That'd be, that'd be, an, that'd be an amazing, that'd be an amazing experience for sure. Hey, Rick, before is. I let you go on the last, uh, on the last question, I actually had an opportunity to be recruited by Mark Rick. Can you give us any insight? Yeah, on Coach Mark. Okay, okay. He's he real <laughs> chill. He's like he's slow talking. Like, hey, how you how are you doing? Like, he's a God fearing man, but he's really a great person. You know, I learned a lot from him for sure. He's like he's a great coach, and he was like a father figure to a lot of the kids on our team. You know that that never really had that. So I feel like he's a great guy. He works for AC Network now. I still keep in touch with him. He's he's somebody that's just he's easy to root for. You know, he's he's an awesome yeah. dude. Now, yeah, I will say that Mark is definitely one of the slowest talking guys I've ever met. <laughs> but he's, he's great, though. <laughs> All right, we go. We, so we go transition to the superlative part. It's like a little two minute warning type situation. Not a two minute warning, but a two minute drill. No huddle. Hit you with rapid fire question, Greg, to see exactly how you adjust and still be able to get pressure on the quarterback. First question for you. Player most likely, a player most like you that's currently in the NFL. Calais Campbell. Okay. Ooh, okay. Like you, 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 you know, hold on, Pat. You know who I was going to say. I like the Calais Campbell uh, comparison as well, but I was going to say Miles Garrett. I knew you was, I was going to say the same thing. I was going to say the same thing. Maybe it's the, complete, the same college number, but the body type, you know yeah. what I mean? Y'all yeah. resemble a lot from the body type from the measurable. He's a monster, man. He's a monster. I watch him a lot on film. No you question. Know? Or um, uh, Carlos Dunlap, Dunlap is a little bit heavier, but when he was in um, when Cincinnati. he was at Florida, no, when yeah. he was at, I'm talking about back in his college days. Yeah, you guys um, resemble the same uh, body structure as well. That yeah. was a he was an animal as well. Yeah. Uh, the school you hate more, Florida State or Florida? Mm -hmm. Florida State. Florida State. Why? I just Florida State. I don't know something. Actually, what they did to me. This isn't the only reason I hate them, but they did. I went to the camp and they didn't offer me, and I was. Uh, and, I, and for a second, for a slight second, I, uh, I kind of wanted to go there just a little bit. Just a uh, tiny. If, bit. if 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 they would have offered you, would you you know would it? Could you see yourself in that garden and go if they would have offered you at nah, that camp? I don't know. <laughs> so what you why you wanted to offer then you would uh, probably you say you, when I was a freshman in high school. You <laughs> wanted to offer that. That's what, uh, but that's what I'm saying. Let's say Greg, if they would have offered you as a freshman in high school, right, and enrolled with you the entire journey throughout high school, huh? <laughs> the answer is no, bro. It's no. <laughs> he don't want to put that on tape. He don't put that on record. Yeah, he don't want to put that on all. He don't put that on record. It's, it's okay, Greg. We ain't gonna tell nobody. If you want to go to Florida State, it's all right. It happens. <laughs> oh, y'all funny, man. <laughs> it happens, you know. All right. Best sideline prop you've seen besides the raggedy turnover chain? Oh, he said raggedy. Oh, yeah, he called raggedy. it raggedy, G. <laughs> 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 hey, man, your boy made that. AJ the jeweler made right, that. Right. My bad, yeah. AJ. My bad. It ain't raggedy. <laughs> but... <laughs> I say the, the backpack is the worst, but I'll say the second best is the uh, what? Georgia, the Georgia Bulldog uh, turnover uh, the, yeah, the, uh, they got the, the, the shoulder pads. pads, right? With the spikes. That was fire. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. That is fine. Right that's right. And we don't got no more backpack. That backpack is long gone. That's disco oh, dead. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, the backpack gone. That backpack gone. <laughs> so, I got one more for you, man. Your best sack celebration. Uh, best sack celebration. You better start working on it. Yeah, I know. I, I need to start working on it. But Florida State, I was waving at the crowd the whole game after I got my sacks. It's that was just like, uh, like, see you later, bye bye. It's like, like, it's like have a have a great night, you know. Thanks for coming out, but we just put the beat down. We had to. We just had to do it to him. What? <laughs> we gonna we gonna we not gonna have this part of the show. We gonna cut that out. <laughs> Eric, to, edit that out, Eric. Don't you put that in? There. <laughs> hey, but real talk, man. Greg, it's a pleasure, man. You great individual, high character guy. Uh, we 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 gonna be watching the draft. And outside of you being from Miami, I'm I'm a root for you to, to go into a good situation and get high, go dra get drafted high, man. So thank you for joining us here. All things covered. You did well in the superlative part. You got two pressures in a sack and a forced fumble. <laughs> we won the ball game. We won the we ball won, game. Baby. Yeah. <laughs>
But, but appreciate you joining us here, man. All things covered, man. Best best of luck to you and your family and whatever organization draft you. They got it. They getting the Pro Bowler. Thank yes, you, sir. man. Appreciate that. God yes, bless. Sir. Appreciate y'all reaching out and having me. Thank you.